Hey there, welcome back to my little farm kitchen. Today I thought I'd bring you along with me as I cook meals for my family. It's just a normal, regular day, nothing fancy. Um, but the difference today is I am dealing with a busted oven. So the oven's on the blink. It is working, so the stove top is working. The oven is not, the heat sensor went out. We're getting it fixed. Um, my resourceful 15 year old in combination with a very handy um, elderly neighbor who always wants to help us out. Um, we're getting on top of that. But I usually bake bread um, every day or every other day. And I haven't been able to do that. So that I also do a lot of my meals are baked because I can prep them ahead and stick them in the oven and it just makes life easy. So of course I'm having to rethink things today, which is fine. There are other ways around these things, but I just thought I'd take you along on the ride today. Brekkie first. I have my coffee, so I'm good to go. Got out my big cast iron skillet and I'm just gonna do some scrambled eggs. Some bacon into the pan. Where are you? Did I drop that bit, sweetie? Good boy. Your bacon sizzling. I'm just going to cut up some garlic. Sprigs of rosemary from outside. Cut these up. Just nothing like the smell of bacon bit of garlic and some fresh herbs <laughs> in the morning. Don't always put the herbs in just if I've got them, but I bought some rosemary bushes the other day and they're all just perfect. Starting to get nice and crackly, and the herbs and the garlic fragrant. So, I'm gonna start cracking. Mm. it as a side to put on top today just adding a little pinch of salt because there's salt from the bacon but I think it could use a little bit more 
Turn that off. Cast iron stays hot for a long time, retains its heat. So I'll often cook it. Turn it off before it's quite done so it doesn't overcook. Some yummy scrambled egg, a little bit of grated cheese on top. And we're good. Brecky's ready. I'm just going to call the kids. I just thought I'd show you this little. I didn't bring many things in our suitcases from Australia, but this old bell used to be the old school bell in the little one room schoolhouse um, in a little village called Araluan near where I grew up. And many generations of my family before me and so I couldn't bear to part with it. So it went in the suitcase and I often use it to call the kids. Break it time. Okay, it's morning tea time. We've just finished um, the morning school lessons, having a little break. So in this day where I'm just making food without my oven, I actually have morning tea already taken care of um, by Ty yesterday. He loves to bake and yesterday, finished these yesterday evening and made these yummy sourdough donuts and glazed them. So they're all good to go for this morning. So we're having our cup of tea and yummy donuts. So I don't have to worry about morning tea today. The donuts, which are delicious, cook on top of the stove. So they didn't need the oven. Um, he just, what did you just fried them in? avocado oil right yeah yeah in the cast iron skillet so we could do that without the oven it is almost lunchtime school is about done so i am going to fix some lunch and i think i will make some flatbread it seems to be the easiest thing i can think of to um to have a quick lunch without using the oven when we don't have any bread i'll make some flatbread okay so i am heating up my cast iron skillets I'll heat these two. I'm just getting a bowl, small bowl, some plain baker's flour and a little bit of wholemeal flour or whole wheat flour. And the only other thing I need is some good water and a little bit of salt. I'm going to use maybe a couple of cups of flour. a cup of wholemeal and I don't know about a half a teaspoon of salt. Just going to add enough water to make a dough, a firm dough. Getting these pans fairly hot, want them pretty pretty hot. I have just made this to a kind of sticky dough consistency and I'm just going to put it out on a floured surface and knead it really quickly for a minute before I roll it out. But I've got to hurry because my pan's getting hot. <laughs> getting too hot. Fact, I'm gonna turn that down a wee bit because it's starting to smoke. So I'm just gonna give it a quick knead. This is really just to smoothen out the dough because this is an unleavened bread. It's not gonna rise at all. I'm just getting a smooth dough. Now I'm gonna cut it into little sections and Roll it out. Okay. So I really didn't work what it are you today making? long. Making flatbread. Flat flat. Flatbread. Flatbread. I love being mini and purple. Okay. So I'm just trying to roll this out as flat as possible. I've done this before without a rolling pin. It's just a little bit more time consuming. You can kind of just stretch it. Wanting to get it as thin as you can. OK, 
Okay. Now I'm going to sprinkle just a tiny bit of flour down. Just a tiny bit. Really just to stop it sticking. And popping them in there for a couple of minutes. Get the next one ready. I mean, you could use these as wraps or they're kind of a bit thicker than a wrap um, or a tortilla. Gotta remember the word they use here, <laughs> tortillas. Um, but honestly, we, my kids just like them with um, butter, with honey. So we kind of use them like bread. that one in there turn the light on I don't know if you can see but it is starting to puff up in places so when it does that I flip him over and this will puff a little bit when they're cooked they'll puff so that's why you need it good and hot so it'll puff up not a huge puff up just a few little bubbles there's a bubble there a bubble there a bubble there so I can see it's cooking all the way through this one is not as hot so it's taking a bit longer and I'm going to actually turn the temp up so I kind of just adjust the temperature according to what I see the bread doing and this one's almost done so it doesn't take very long okay this one's starting to puff now I'm grabbing it with my fingers but I'm being real careful not to touch because obviously the cast iron is very hot and what I sometimes, you can use a spoon, a knife, anything just to help you. Okay, so yeah, this one's good. It's done. Putting them on a plate. You can see this one's puffed right up nicely. Okay, so I can go on the plate and I'll pop the next one on. Kind of just try and keep a production line going. I'm going to flip this guy. Popping up. To me, this is a lot more fiddling around than just making a loaf of bread. But it is quicker in, as far as the end product. And when the oven's on the blink, it's a good alternative. <laughs> this guy here is nearly ready to flip. And I'll just... He's browning nicely and this is the one that I've just rolled out on the floured bench so it's pretty pretty thin ready to go in and I've got one more so I'm gonna flip him So if you leave them too long, they'll go too crunchy and hard. If you don't flip them, if you get them off too quickly, they'll obviously, they just won't be cooked through and they won't have puffed. So they'll be kind of dense if you do that. Okay, so we've got a nice little pile of flip breads here and we'll butter them, put some cheese and ham maybe some honey and butter whatever the kids feel like they can put toppings on and that's lunch done okay it's time to think about dinner um i have just popped a chicken and this Dutch oven covered it in water I'm gonna let it just um, simmer but come to a boil cook the chicken through when it's done I'll take it out and the plan is I'll make sort of a chicken soup but I'll think I'll do chicken and dumplings because I haven't been able to make any bread I could do rice that would be another option that I could do on the stovetop without the oven but we haven't had chicken and dumplings in a while um, 
and I think the kids will like that. So I think we'll do that today. So this chicken is cooking away. And one thing, and people, you may already know this, but this, when you're cooking a chicken that is not, um, you haven't grown yourself and is just a store-bought chicken, there is a lot more you'll find um, scum on the top. See this scum that's rising up as it cooks? And that is something you do want to sift off and discard. Um, the scum, it will be where a lot of the toxins are housed. So I always scoop off the scum and throw it out as the chicken is cooking. One day soon, we'll have our own chickens that we will be able to process and put in the freezer and I won't be dealing with this, but we'd make do with what we've got. It is just, I guess it's just one way to sort of try and minimize the toxic load on this, no doubt, industrially farmed chicken. Not the best, but it's food and we are grateful for it. And we are working towards better. Okay, while that keeps cooking, I'm just going to quickly chop up an onion, some celery, some carrots, just for the base of what we're about to do with the rest of the dinner. Celery, onion, and carrots honestly is a really good sort of base for a lot of soups. The flavors go really nicely together. Another handy trick, which I often do, is when I find these store bought veggies and I'm not sure of their origins, is I'll rinse them in apple cider vinegar, just a little bit in the water, like a a little bit in the water that in the sink fill the sink up put a cup or half a cup of apple cider vinegar with all the veggies I bought and it will help it'll just wash off any chemical residues you never I mean unless you have you're at that place in your life where you're already growing all your veggies or you are able to purchase somewhere really good farm fresh and you know they haven't been sprayed. Um, it is a good little hack until you get to that place to just give them a rinse with apple cider vinegar. Now, obviously that is not as good as growing them yourself, but when you're on the journey to get to that point, it can be really good to know some of these little tricks to help to help move you forward towards better options for healthy food for your family. And sometimes we can get there in one big leap and sometimes we have to take baby steps. I'm sorry about the really bad lighting here. I had a feeling I've put a crack in my the camera on my phone and I just film all these on my phone. So, uh, unfortunately, I don't even know when I did that. Nice little colorful plate. I've just turned it over to have a look and you can see it is starting to come away from the bone. So in a few minutes, I will take it out and debone it. I'm gonna pop it onto this tray. Now, I'm the first to admit that I am a sentimental old chook and get all emotional at the slightest things. But every time I pick this up, I can see my dad carving a lamb roast on it. It's another thing that made it into my suitcase that I couldn't bet to part with. 
So sadly, no lamb roast today, but a chicken. <laughs> Okay, I have put most of the meat here, the bones, and yes, there is still a bit of meat on those bones. There definitely is, but I'm actually, I don't wanna waste any of it. I'm gonna use the chicken. I have some broth in the fridge, actually. I'm just gonna double check I have broth in the fridge. And um, I wanna save any of the bones that I can make another lot of broth with. Okay, so yes, I was correct. I have broth in the fridge. So for the purposes of a quicker meal tonight, I'm going to keep this liquid in here, pop those bones back in the liquid and continue to make a broth. I'll add a few more ingredients um, for the broth that you can see the broth I made these with, the recipe for that and what I'm going to do now with the, those bones. Um, I've done that on another video. I can put the link for that below. But because I've already got it made, I'm just gonna go ahead and use that tonight and get the other broth going for the next batch. Then use this for our chicken and dumplings. going to use some beef lard to start this off to fry the onions and things I saved this from a curry I made the other day and it does have some of those curry flavors in it but I think that's totally fine it'll be all right with what we're making it doesn't really matter that it's beef I just want a good fat to start that off okay, while that's heating I'm just going to add my other ingredients to that broth that I'm going to keep going in the back there. I don't actually have all the ingredients. I usually put cloves, uh, not cloves, oh my word, I just saw cloves in the cupboard. <laughs> I do usually put um, bay leaves, but I don't have bay leaves. I've run out, so that's okay. I can just go with what we've got. So I'm just going to pop the onions and the carrots and the celery in here now. Okay, while that does its thing, I'm going to cut up some garlic. I always toss up and down as I'm cooking. Do I want to get the get something else dirty and use the, the little garlic press that I have to do minced garlic or do I want to save dishes and do a knife with a knife and I'm always like eh. invariably end up going, <laughs> going with the knife I don't mind bigger bits of onion I guess it depends a little bit what you're making I mean garlic sorry Okay, so that is starting. I don't know if you can see through the, <laughs> through the smoke. It's starting to brown nicely and soften a little. I'm going to put half of the garlic in and leave the rest for in a little while. We can get some of that flavor through there straight away. Now, as long as it's cooled down a bit, I always just use a pair of scissors to chop these in. I just find it so much quicker then trying to chop all this chicken with a knife. I don't know, some people might have some awesome fast knife skills and that's great. <laughs> but I find this so much easier. Lovely gelatinous broth, so good. 
So much goodness right there. Well, that's quieter. Making a bunch of noise. Lovely, lovely. Okay, so that's just simmering away, just slowly reheating. I am going to add um, just a few herbs, some thyme, oregano, some pepper. I'll probably salt it closer to the end. Good shake of pepper. And we'll pop the rest of this garlic in now. Okay, while that cooks, I'm just going to add what other veggies I have, which happens to be this, I'm gonna call it a yellow zucchini. I think some people call it, or maybe here it's called a squash um, of some kind. It is definitely in the squash family. So I'm going to chop him up and add, and then get started on the dumplings. Okie dokie. Pop those in. Oop. Give it a nice little stir. I love green peas in this as well, but I don't have any green peas, any peas. Okay, so this recipe for the dumplings is my granny's recipe. I haven't actually used it in the chicken and dumplings before. I've used a different recipe, but I thought today I would use granny's. It actually goes in a recipe for golden dumplings, but this part of the recipe is savory, so I think that'll be fine. One day I'll have to make the golden dumplings with you guys because they are so delicious and just one of those, they're, they're definitely not really a health food <laughs> at all, but a fun, a fun special treat food. So we're doing a cup of flour. Calls for self-raising flour, so I'm going to add the raising agent, a teaspoon of baking powder into that. Give those a little stir. Okay, so I've got cold butter and I want about a tablespoon. Yeah, about a tablespoon, that might be a little bit too much. About a tablespoon of butter. I'm just going to rub it in so it's kind of cold so I can cut it in a little bit. And then I'll just rub it between my fingers until it's mixed in. This is this step is kind of like if you're doing scones um, or uh, southern biscuits are the same process you get butter and you're really just using the tips of your fingers so that the butter does not melt with the heat of your hand and break it up kind of crumble it in with your fingertips so it's all crumbled into the flour mixture and then we're going to add a beaten egg and two tablespoons of milk my mother and father-in-law are here for a few days so my father-in-law loves soup so I always try and make a bit of soup while he's here while they are here okay okay so it's kind of just crumbled in you probably can't even really see but it's crumbled into the flour so now we're going to crack one of our eggies eggy wiggles we call them into there, heat that a little lightly. Make a little well. Pour in the egg. 
and a couple of tablespoons of flour of milk. This is actually a dessert spoon, so I'm going to kind of overflow it a little. <laughs> That's my method of making sure it's a tablespoon, <laughs> kind of. My measurements are definitely somewhat approximate. Just going to add a pinch of salt because I feel like it. I think it's a good idea. Now, my somewhat approximate measurements mean that I have to adjust a little bit more milk because you can see that's a bit crumbly and we do want it to come together to be, to form a dough. We're getting there now. Okay, so I've just rolled it into a ball and put a little bit of flour down and I'm going to roll it out into a long um, like a sausage. Trying to make it uniform as possible. Okay, and now we're just gonna cut it into dumplings. You can adjust the thickness it's just going to vary the amount of time it takes to cook. So I guess I'm doing these like a, a centimeter or a fraction under. So what's that? A quarter of an inch, I guess. Okay, so this is simmering away nicely. So I'm actually going to add a good bit of cream. Okay, I'm just going to add a squeeze of lemon juice to that. Give it a little quick stir. Let's come back up to temperature, up to heat, just, you know, approximately. And I'm going to drop in my yummy dumplings. Well, I hope they're yummy. <laughs> they are they're all starting to swell up but we're just gonna stir them around a bit make sure they bob down under the water uh, under the soup so I'm gonna cover that and let that cook for about 10 minutes 10 or 15 it's gonna add some salt just remembered I haven't done that amount of salt in there. Just going to gently mix it in so as not to break up those dumplings. I should have probably done it before the dumplings. Okay, I think they're about good. They're about good to go. Looking delicious. So we'll serve it up and see. So there we go one yummy bowl of chicken dumpling soup which i'm sure will do the trick and feed fill some bellies and keep little bodies growing little and big bodies growing so that's it that's a wrap on today just a simple look at some simple food and how 
Um, I just made do today without the oven. Um, a couple of options, I guess, with the dumplings and the flatbread of things you can do if you can't bake bread. And I really didn't want to compromise and go buy bread. Um, just not the best choice for our health. Sometimes we do that. That's okay. I'm not saying I never buy bread, but it is good to know that we aren't forced into that situation and we do have options. So blessings to all of you and I'll see you next time.